With the temporal Cold War in full swing, and the Federation's public weary of the shortage of dilithium crystals, Starfleet Command would embark on a Project Lineage, in an effort to bring Federation member worlds closer together. And although successful for a time, creating new versions of classes such as the Constitution class, this amazing endeavor would eventually be dropped when the burn devastated the entire galaxy. But what do we know about this new Constitution class starship design? Well, today, we'll find out. Hello and welcome to the premiere episode of Season 6 of Truth or Myth Beta Canon, a Star Trek web series that dives into the history of any given topic using Beta Canon sources and my own imagination to fill in the gaps. In today's episode, we're taking a look at the 32nd century Constitution class of Starfleet starships, as first seen in Season 3 of Star Trek Discovery to better understand its place in Star Trek history. Once again, this video is a little bit different, as there isn't a whole lot of information on this class or its history quite yet. So I sourced both Alpha and Beta Canon and came up with a story that I hope you'll enjoy. I'd also like to remind everyone that Alpha Canon always trumps Beta Canon. So although Star Trek Online, a Beta Canon source, refers to this class as the Kirk class in order to differentiate it from other Constitution class starships in the game, Alpha Cannon has already declared this to be the Constitution class, merely one having been created and constructed in the 32nd century. Also, as usual, all channel rules are in full effect. That means if you come onto this channel ranting and raving about Discovery, you'll be shown to the nearest airlock, no questions asked. Star Trek Discovery is canon, whether a minority like it or not, and we're all adults here meaning we have the ability to follow the basic fundamentals of the franchise we claim to cherish so much, such as Idik and respect for others. And I have no time and certainly no problem ensuring that this is a safe space for all those fans out there that love all or any of Star Trek. So bear that in mind. And of course, as always, because this is a beta canon video, all information relayed should pretty much be taken with a grain of stardust and only considered a little bit of Star Trek fun. And so, with all that out of the way, let's begin. The galaxy was being torn apart. The Temporal Cold War, as it would come to be known, had created clear divides between Federation member and non-member worlds alike. In the centuries before the Temporal Cold War, the galaxy was actually in a state of relative peace. Though not yet completely explored, the vast majority of the Milky Way galaxy had come together in the spirit of cooperation, and had learned how to live peacefully with one another. But when time travel had become a relatively easy thing to achieve, and more aggressive and hostile races threatened to alter the timeline to their own end, Starfleet and the Federation Council would clamp down hard on this new technology to the resentment of many species who saw the technology as an opportunity to change the current timeline for the better. Eventually, the Temporal Cold War would simply become the Temporal War, heating up rather quickly and forcing Starfleet to use time travel itself to win the conflict. And eventually they were successful, and the galaxy would agree to ban all forms of time travel in the name of the greater good. But hurt feelings and shattered pride would continue to fracture the Milky Way galaxy as never before, tarnishing its once great galactic image. So even before the Temporal War had finished, Starfleet Command and the United Federation of Planets began a project to bring the galaxy back together and remind everyone of the roots of the organization. Project Lineage would once again redefine the image of Starfleet, back to one of an earlier time of exploration and first contact. Setting its best and brightest Starship design engineers, the task of creating Starship classes in the likes of the best hero ship classes throughout Starfleet and Federation history, the two organizations hoped to inspire the galaxy once again, and for the most part they were successful. 
but with the shortage of dilithium crystals becoming a huge problem for the galaxy at large, some member worlds saw this project as an unnecessary use of the little remaining resources they had. Most of these fears, however, were put aside when the first class of Project Lineage completed its construction and was debuted to the galaxy, with the promise that this new Constitution class's primary goal was to explore all remaining unexplored regions of the galaxy, as well as the Milky Way satellite galaxies, in search of further deposits of dilithium crystals for the galaxy to share. The design itself was in fact the product of centuries of upgrades to the original Constitution class heavy cruiser design, first launched in the year 2245. As Starfleet Command had always had a design similar to this original class in service throughout its history. And although these classes were not named the Constitution class, the general configuration of the starship had always remained the same. Sitting at a length of 1,399.82 meters and constructed to be a city in space, this new Constitution class was designed to be operated by 2,000 officers and crew members and could carry an additional 10,000 persons, such as crew's families, both immediate and extended, and support personnel to create a thriving colony in space. Equipped with the latest quantum slipstream drive, as well as a standard warp drive, the Constitution class would reach the nearest satellite galaxy to the Sol system, the Canis Major Dwarf Galaxy, in just three and a half days. Their traditional deflector dish design, seen in many of Starfleet's classes, was done away with altogether, in favor of newer deflector strips, which adorned the hull at various places. These new deflector strips created a large bubble around the ship to deflect all space particles, while simultaneously improving the speed and capabilities of the slipstream drive. In fact, the entire design of the Starship, though again retaining the general shape of the original Constitution class, had been designed with tremendous speeds and efficiency of the slipstream drive in mind. As a result, many areas of the design would have what was known as cutout sections and brace bars. The secondary hull would retain the now commonplace feature of being disconnected from the primary hull. This had the advantage of allowing the starship to easily separate into two vessels, but also to be far more maneuverable than traditionally connected starships had ever been. Unlike most Starfleet vessels of the time, however, the Constitution class did not have detached nacelles again done in the interest of speed and efficiency of its quantum slipstream drive. Weaponry of this class was the most advanced for its time and included several phaser and torpedo array systems with shield capabilities to match these upgraded technologies. As previously stated, the intention of this new Constitution class design was to explore the satellite galaxies surrounding the Milky Way in search of new deposits of dilithium crystals. And because this was to be such a long-term mission, this vessel class was designed as a self-sustaining colony rather than a traditional starship design. And should the quantum slipstream drive ever become damaged or inoperative, the Constitution class could act as a starbase of sorts, with its own stockpile of programmable matter and provisions to convert resources and set up star bases in these satellite galaxies. The USS Constitution NCC 1700-N was launched in 3062, with 4,123 people aboard to brave the unknowns of the Canis Major Dwarf Galaxy. But in 3069, when the burn overtook the galaxy, destroying all starships with active warp cores, contact was lost with the USS Constitution and her sister starships in the Dwarf Galaxy, the USS James T. Kirk and the USS Matthew Decker. Believed to have been destroyed by the burn, Starfleet Command was shocked to find all three starships still fully operational, having established several colonies and star bases within Canis Major. 
Apparently, the burn did not penetrate the galactic barrier which surrounded the Milky Way. Instead, it irradiated the barrier, making outside galactic contact and travel an impossibility for over a century. And after lengthy discussions between the three starships, it was decided that they would continue their mission and establish a new Starfleet and Federation in the satellite galaxy, as they had determined that travel through the irradiated barrier would cause their own Starship's destructions. And so the three Starships alone in the Canis Major Dwarf Galaxy would wait and hope for the day that the galactic barrier would return to normal, and that they could regain contact with their home galaxy the Milky Way. And finally, in 3190, contact would be regained between the Old Guard and New, and full diplomatic relations would be established much to the delight of both sides. Currently, the USS Constitution is working with Starfleet Command of the Milky Way to establish safe travels between galaxies, and as soon as safety can be assured, the Constitution herself will be returning to Starfleet Command for a full debriefing and update with the hopes of integrating this century-old version of itself into the newly re-established Federation. But for now, both sides still wait. Constructed to inspire new generations for the foreseeable future, no one could have predicted the major influence the new Constitution class would have after the burn. In fact, the full ramifications of this class's effect on Starfleet's future in the cosmos has not yet even begun to be realized. And this fact alone, for good or for bad, has earned the new Constitution class its place in Starfleet history. Thank you for watching today's episode of Truth or Myth Beta Canon. What do you think of the 32nd century Constitution class and the historical narrative that I've created here? Would you like to hear more stories about this class's adventures in the Canis Major Dwarf Galaxy after the burn? Well, leave your comments in the section below, and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, hitting that little bell icon so you won't miss a single video we release. Want to help refit the channel with Project Lineage? Then consider becoming a channel patron. The link to our Patreon account is in the description below. Thanks again for watching, live long, and prosper.